Hey guys, so I'm back and I'm coming to you with a very special message to help you to start off the new year in a really strong way. Um, and I personally know so many people that have been affected this last year that have found it incredibly difficult, myself included. However, within every difficult year that will have been and is so many amazing things that have happened as well. So my first challenge to you to start off this new year in the best way possible is to go back and have a look at some amazing things that have happened this year because no matter how hard it's been, there will always have been some incredible moments in there. So first and foremost, I challenge you to write down three things that you have achieved this year that are incredible. And that could be that you've deepened your relationships with the people in your life or started a relationship with somebody special in your life. It could be that you've achieved something incredible in your career. It could be that you have um, overcome yourself physically and managed to attain a level of fitness or take on an activity that you didn't think was possible. Whatever it is, whatever those things are, and you can think about them if you think back to that well-being wheel, so body, mind, relationships, finances, purpose, and environment. You know, is it something within there? Or is it something completely different for you that, you know, something like you've read a certain amount of books uh, this year and you're really proud of that, or you've developed yourself in other ways in terms of the things that you've learned. So that's number one. Number two is thinking about the things that haven't gone so well, but that you can take responsibility for. Because it's very easy for us to look outside of ourselves and say, yeah, that didn't work out because of that person, because of that thing. There's this really cool principle called the Adlerian Triangle, which I absolutely love. And the Adlerian Triangle looks at human conversation from three different viewpoints. So most of the time in our everyday life, um, we are either coming from this point or this point on the triangle. And these two points are either um, poor me, or that person. So we live 99.999% of the time in our default mode in conversations by saying, that person, they did this to me or poor me, this happened to me. And what do you think are the reasons why that doesn't work for us? I'm gonna give you a couple now. So number one, it gives that other person, that circumstance, the power over us. It makes us a victim. It makes us unable to actually move forwards because it's making us think that things are outside of our control and therefore it doesn't matter what we do anyway. Which if you go all the way back to that first video that I recorded for you guys, that puts us in the helpless point on that dial. So instead of being in either of those two spaces, what Adler would recommend is flipping that triangle over and coming from the third space. And the third space asks us, so what do I do from now on? What do I do from now on? Irrespective of whether all of the things that have happened to you have caused you to be exactly where you are right now and that it is completely justified that you feel the way that you feel and that the, the deck has been stacked against you this year and that things have happened but it still doesn't stop you from asking the question, so what, what now? What do I do from now on? Because when we ask ourselves that question and come from that space, which inevitably we'll have to get to at some point anyway, we're empowering ourselves. And one of the core things that I've been speaking to people about, particularly my clients this last year, is that our life changes when we go from being a reaction to the things that happen to us to a response. And it's through that question that we get to become a response. So we um, think about the word responsibility. So we are able to respond. Think about that incredible quote um, from one of my heroes, Viktor Frankl. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. And within that space, there is a choice. And within that choice, there is our freedom. And that is the trick here. It's recognizing that we have a choice. We have agency. There is something that we can do do even if it only makes things 1% better. So when you're recognizing the things that haven't gone well, and I would invite you to think of three things, and again, that could be, you know, I didn't get my body to the place that I wanted to be this year. It could be, I didn't manage to um, make the 
breakthroughs or the strides in my career that I'd hoped to. I didn't achieve those goals that I'd set myself in my career this year. It could be that relationship didn't work or things have broken down or they haven't improved or they've gone backwards in my relationships. It could be I haven't reached my financial targets that I'd hoped for or that I'm not in the place, you know, the environmental place that I wanted to be. Uh, it could be, I'm thinking about the well-being wheel here, it could be that we haven't managed to overcome ourselves. You know, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, we've allowed ourselves, as Tony Robbins just said, we've negotiated with our mind, we've negotiated with ourselves. And because we've done that, we haven't then made the breakthroughs in our lives. And so when we fall into those things where we fall into those traps where we go really passive and we're not moving forwards the way to override that as I've just said is to think about the responsibility that we can apply to each of those things and that's going to take us to the, the third task and the last piece that I'm going to ask you to do to set yourself up for this new year and that's to think about three things that you want to do differently or you want to add in in 2022. And I recommend that they're attached to those three other things that we've just spoken about. So if it's that you're thinking from the, oh, you know, my body isn't where I want it to be, it's like, okay, so where's your responsibility? Well, I didn't make it a priority. I didn't invest X amount of time in it day and day out, no matter how hard it got. I didn't control my diet. I didn't get things out of my environment, out of my environment, and say no to things. It could be I didn't make the strides in my career. Okay, so where's my responsibility? Well, okay, I didn't put myself forward for those opportunities. I held myself back because I was afraid of failing. I didn't learn a new skill. Or maybe you did all those things, but you just need to keep doing them for longer and more consistently. And you need to seek greater guidance. You need to learn new things, new skills. You need to learn from the things that haven't worked this year and keep um, failing forwards with that knowledge. So whatever it is, it's about transmuting the things that have happened. So going back to my paper, which has actually been published this year. So if you want um, to find that and you want to have a look at that, I'll pop the link in the description. But it's going back to that fundamental viewpoint that we learned together, you know, in the first, one of the first videos that I shared with you, which is failure is not the end, it's the beginning. So whatever it's been that you see as your failures this last year, the things that you feel ashamed of, you feel shit about, you feel like you should have done better, you could have done better. Okay, flip that for me. So yeah, poor me, that person, flip it. So what do I do from now on? This is where we get to the final three. So then you think very strategically about how then you will approach that this year. And so to recap, so the first three things that I'm going to invite you to do is to really recognize the amazing things that have happened this year, the incredible things that you've done, that you've achieved, that maybe you didn't even think was possible. Maybe the past you would never have believed that you would have been able to pull off. And you might not even be seeing that as valuable. You might not be seeing that as anything, but it is and it matters. What you've done this past year, 2021, it matters. And it's laid a foundation for you. And now it's time to build on that. And the things that haven't worked, so three things that just hasn't worked, that hasn't come together, and move as quickly as you can away from poor me, oh yeah, that way, <laughs> poor me, that person, move as quickly as you can when you're thinking about these things, so where's my responsibility here? What can I do? And then flip that failure from an end point to a starting point. See yourself as in motion, in progress, in evolution, in process of growth. Because when you do that, when you allow yourself to actually be what you are, which is an evolving being in this world, and you actually capitalize on that by allowing yourself to learn from the things that you're doing, from the things that have worked, haven't worked, and why, and you take full responsibility for that. That's when you have a choice as to what happens this year in 2022. That's when you create your own freedom that's when you get to actually be the person that you're aspiring to. So 
with all of that said, happy new year. Like an email is about to make an atrocious noise. <laughs> but um, happy new year, you wonderful people. I have so appreciated connecting with you in 2021. It has been an honor to be able to make content that has been meaningful to you. Uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for making me feel as though I'm living my purpose by serving you and being able to be a part of your journeys. So I'm wishing you the happiest new year. Let's be proactive as fuck. <laughs> and let's make sure that we make this year everything that it can be. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.